Hello. Today we are in the for loops chapter in Learn to Code, and we're doing the third activity, to the edge and back. To the edge and back. All right, the instructions here say to use a for loop to repeat a rotating pattern. Repeat a rotating pattern. It also says in this challenge we'll be practicing finding repeating patterns, and we must activate four switches. There are four switches. There are actually eight switches in the puzzle, but four are already toggled on. And the first one is right ahead of Byte. After he goes down some stairs is the first, um, is the first switch he'll need to toggle on. Okay. This says then break down the puzzle by figuring out the sequence of commands needed for your character to activate the first switch and then return to the central point. Okay, so we want him to activate the switch, then return to the central point. And um, that's actually a pretty big clue here, because there's really two ways we could solve this puzzle. One is we can do what the instructions say, which is to go get this, uh, go toggle the switch right in front of us, come back to the center, then turn to the right, and go down and toggle the switch in front of him then then turn to the right again, go down and toggle the switch in front of byte then, then turn to the right and go toggle the switch in front of byte then. Okay, so this is sort of, um, maybe we'll call this the central, central point strategy. But can you see another strategy for solving this? Yeah, we could go down and toggle this first switch right in front of us, and then go along the outside of the puzzle, along all the grass-covered squares, these green squares around the periphery of the puzzle. We could go walk our way all the way around those, toggling on the switches uh, in that case. I'm not going to solve it that way. I'm going to leave that one for you if you'd like to try some practice after we're done with this. Um, I'm going to go with the suggestion of the uh, suggestion of the instructions here and do our central point strategy where we go from the middle and toggle that switch. Okay, now uh, just like anything what we'd like to do is to break our problem down into some sub-problems, something we can handle easily and then especially if that thing that we, if that sub-problem we solve is something we can repeat well, then we'll do whatever we have to do, in this case a for loop, to repeat that uh, subproblem. So in here, the first subproblem we have is let's go down and toggle the switch right in front of us, and then let's come back to the central point. Okay? So to do that, let's uh, go ahead and say, well, uh, we need to move forward, and we need to move forward again, and then we'll be on the switch and we'll toggle the switch. And then I need to go back to the center point here. So back to the center point would mean I need to turn around. Turn around, okay? I've got no function to turn around, so I'm gonna need to write that. It's okay, we know how to do that from last chapter, functions. And after we turn around, we're gonna go back to. So move forward, move forward, okay? Um, let's write our turnaround function. Function turn around. And turn around, we could just say, is maybe two turn lefts. Okay, there we go. So uh, now this is uh, hopefully handling our sub problem of going down and getting a switch that's right in front of us. Okay, so I'm going to run the code, of course, just to make sure that this works. It goes byte, a move forward, a move forward, toggle switch, turn around, move forward, move forward. Okay, good. All right, now at this point we said we wanted to go handle the switch that is on, well, it was on byte's right. Now it's on bytes left, okay? I'm gonna go back to the beginning here. See how this switch over here is on bytes left now? Well, at the beginning, it was on bytes right. I went back and uh, reset the puzzle, so it's back, it's on bytes right. 
So if we came back to where we came from and we were in facing the same direction from when we started, then we would need to turn right. If we came back after executing this code one time, okay, now when he comes back, he's facing away from us, and that switch is on the left. Okay, so we could either just do this, and then at the end of this, we could turn left so that we're ready to do it again, or Another possibility is when we come back like this, we could do a full turnaround since we have this written here, and then we'll be facing the way we were originally, and then we would do a turn right at that point. Now, that's wasting a little bit of time, but in some cases that's easier for me to think about. So sometimes that's okay to do whatever it is easier for you to think about. So let's try this again where he's going to go down here, flip the switch, come back, turn around so that he's facing the way he was before, then turn right, okay? I'm going to keep that in there for now. You could do it the other way if you want, where you just turn left. Um, but from this point, if we do this sequence of commands again, move forward, move forward, toggle switch, turn around, move forward, move forward, turn around, and then turn right, we'll be ready to handle the next switch and so on. We need to do this sequence of commands some number of times in order that we can toggle all the switches. All right, so uh, we could do our for loop in here now. that says we're going to execute these commands. For i in one dot 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 for, and then don't forget your curly braces, Okay, there's my for loop. And remember, if I tap on this bracket down here, the lower bracket, I can drag it down to get all these, this whole sequence of commands inside our for loop. Okay, all right. Um, let's go ahead and uh, try this out. Do this four times. Here he goes. Move forward, move forward, toggle switch, turn around. Move forward, move forward. Turn around again so he's facing the way he started. Now just turn to the right and do it all again. This is called the second iteration of the sequence of commands. It's the second time he's running through the sequence. Turn around, move right. Now do the stairs again. Come back up, turn around, and turn to the right and then handle the stairs again. All right, nice. He did it. Okay, um, that's great. I'm going to actually see if I can improve this a little bit more. Um, this sequence of commands right here where he moves forward, moves forward, toggles the switch, turn around, moves forward, moves forward, and then comes back, is a nice little sequence of commands that maybe any time I need to go get a switch that's two in front of me and toggle it, um, that I could use that over and over again. Okay. Um, in fact, if I include the turn around, that means he's going to solve a a small little sub puzzle where he goes and gets a switch in front of him, comes back and ends up facing the same direction he was before. Okay, so this kind of does something that is useful that we might want to do some other time. So this is a good uh, candidate for including in a function. I'm going to cut this code out of here, okay, and practice my functions again and maybe call this, um, I'm going to call this function move to and toggle, move to and toggle, and now I'm going to paste my code in here so that I have a function that's just called move to and toggle. Actually, let's change the name of this to be move to 
toggle and return. By return, I mean come back to where I was facing the same direction I was. Okay, Move to toggle and return. Now, inside the for loop, instead of having this big sequence of commands in here, I can just uh, say I want to move forward, toggle and return, then turn right. And then I want to do that again, where I'm going to move forward, toggle and return, and then turn to the right. And then I'm going to move uh, move forward to toggle and return and turn to the right and so on. So that makes my main program, this program right here, a little easier to read and understand. And it abs abstracts the idea of handling one of these stairways, one of these stair paths in a function. And then I don't have to worry about the details of this. And it has the added benefit that if someday I ever need to move forward to toggle a switch, return, and face the way I was when I started, I've already written that code. I can come back and grab this and use it in my code again sometime. Okay? All right. Uh, if you have any questions, just go ahead and uh, we'll post them in the comments. Um, uh, and get again, just to repeat what we did here, is that we um, went ahead and looked for a pattern, a, a small, simple pattern that we could do over and over again. In this case, it was move ahead to toggle and come back to where we were. And once we had that pattern, it was simply a matter of putting it in a for loop to repeat that pattern four times. Now, we also said there was another way to solve this problem, and if you would like to practice, you should think about moving forward to, to the outside perimeter, maybe turn to the right, and go ahead and see if you can write a repeating pattern that will um, solve this puzzle by going around the outside of the puzzle, toggling the switches that way. Uh, it would be some good extra practice. Okay, see you next time.